Hello! Today I'm returning to the Tekken series with a look at another character who skirts the events of the central story, Ling Xiaoyu. Now, as with those Tekken characters I've recently discussed, such as Horang, uh, the Second King, and Jin Kazama, Xiaoyu was another new entrant to the momentous Tekken 3, and as with the others, she emphasised the strides in graphical and technical superiority that Tekken 3 brought to bear on the fighting genre. And perhaps uncommon for a fighting game that had already had two previous entries, it was only with the arrival of Ling Xiaoyu that we saw the more familiar, or perhaps cinematically stereotypical styles of Kung Fu and Chinese martial arts being applied to the series. And I suppose, yes, to date, uh, at the arrival of Tekken 3, we had already seen martial law, who embodies the very niche Bruce exploitation role of characterising Jeet Kune Do and a Bruce Lee looking character. We have had Lei Wu Long with his Jackie Chan-esque drunken master vibes, which was introduced in Tekken 2. And we'd had Wang Jinrei, who had that very hard, soft, Qigong, Baji Quan sort of thing going on, which we later see echoed into characters such as Michelle Chang, uh, Julia Chang, uh, Leo, and others. But it's with the arrival of Ling Xiaoyu that we had the flowing cinematic style of wushu-type arts shining through and typifies the sort of popular images of Chinese fighting media, such as Jet Li's Once Upon a Time in China, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, House of Flying Daggers, Hero, and so on. And so, even as early as Tekken 3, Ling Xiaoyu stood out to this end, with a very unique, fluid moveset that emphasised the string work and delicate martial arts qualities of Chinese cinema. Moving on to her image and persona, Xiaoyu was also a departure from the other female characters that we'd seen in the series so far, and while characters like Nina and Anna had a certain femme fatale vibe about them, and Michelle and June had a very severe, drama-driven purpose for their inclusion to the Tekken saga, Ling Xiaoyu was the first instance of a, a light-hearted, sort of cutesy adolescent character that we see in the Tekken game, the likes of which crops up commonly in Japanese anime and manga, and is the sort of stock character in Japanese media that is often the cause of annoyance uh, and comedic cutaways around the central characters and the central storyline. And a prime example of this is her debut ending uh, in Tekken 3, which rather than the classic rendered 3D uh, FMV style, was a brilliantly executed anime that shows an amusing exchange between herself and Heihachi, where he ruins her desired aims of a Xiaoyu-style theme park, and instead he creates Heihachi Land, which prompts uh, Ling Xiaoyu to beat the crap out of him. So it was a really good ending that typifies the sort of character and personality that Xiaoyu is, you know, her role in the Tekken series, and, and this sort of unique persona that she, she injects upon the events. Now, following her debut in Tekken 3, and as Xiaoyu has gradually settled into the saga and settled in, found her place in the story, it becomes clear that, like other upbeat adolescent characters in other media, as I've touched on, she orbits the more severe and dramatic character of Jin Kazama, attempting to console him, save him, and otherwise guide him uh, as a moral compass sort of character. And again, this is quite significant among the other characters, and indeed the female characters in the Tekken games, because she retains this certain purity and innocence in the face of some quite ruthless and aggressive antagonistic character. And it's only really Jun Kazama uh, that equaled this sort of purity and innocence uh, to date, I think. Not to say that they are the only good guys in the series, but they have that sort of youthful wholesomeness about them, have been comparatively less damaged in life by the actions of the Mishimas compared to characters such as Julia Chang, for example. And I suppose this connection Xiaoyu shares with Jin, uh, the fact her debut uh, and some of her costumes feature a schoolgirl outfit, for example. She has this connection with a slightly more rose-tinted, optimistic time in life. You know, she very much is the, the upbeat teenager. And this is emphasised by other elements, such as, of course, her personality, the fact she has a comical relationship with a pet panda, and so on. Uh, and so, even as far as Tekken 7, it's a testament to how unique and upbeat she is within the roster. So I really quite like her, and I like her uh, inclusion in the games. Now, beyond the, the mainline Tekken instalments, there have been some efforts to elevate Ling to a, to a greater degree within the narrative and the anthology, specifically within the movies, or the movie Tekken Blood Vengeance, and the anime uh, on Netflix, Tekken Bloodline. And for my part, I think 
Tekken Bloodline nails her role. I think it does really well because it retains the logical character hierarchy of Xiao Yu, Hoarang, and even Paul Phoenix being supporting characters. You know, they, they are important, but they are supporting roles around the primary arc of the Mishima story, which is the dominating story up to and including Tekken 7, Tekken 8. I think Tekken Blood Vengeance was a little more derivative, uh, and it really went to great lengths to try and elevate secondary characters like Ling and like Alisa in order to bridge old and new uh, legacy with the future elements of Tekken. And I had mixed feelings about how that was executed. Uh, it wasn't the strongest. It wasn't bad, but it certainly wasn't the strongest Tekken media. But as I say, uh, I think within the mainline games, within Tekken Bloodline, Ling Xiaoyu has been pretty solid uh, as a supporting role that orbits Jin Kazama as this moralizing force, and, and that works really well. Coming on to aesthetics, Xiaoyu has definitely evolved over time, uh, and uh, as I say, she had this innocent demeanour back in Tekken 3, 4, even 5, but in recent years she has matured stylistically, and efforts have definitely been made to give her a certain sex appeal, uh, but beyond that she has generally retained a consistent look in keeping with the naive schoolgirl vibe. You know, she has pigtails, for example. She sometimes is depicted in a school uniform, but more often than not, uh, a traditional Chinese uh, Cheong Sam sort of outfit. And actually, unlike a lot of characters who retain their core colour palette, uh, such as Paul Phoenix, usually he's in a red jadogi or, or black leathers. Nina, more often than not, wears purple. And Kazuya Mishima often wears white. Ling has evolved quite heavily uh, fr from initially wearing a red primary outfit and a blue secondary outfit, not dissimilar to Chun-Li, and that was her debut in Tekken 3. But now, more often than not, she wears a sort of bronze, uh, orangey sort of attire in the most recent games, so has departed quite radically from her earliest designs. But I think she's matured quite well aesthetically, uh, and I think she looks pretty cool. So there we have it. Uh, that about wraps up the the important secondary role uh, of Ling Xiaoyu, who I think is a great contribution uh, to the Tekken saga. If you got this far, thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to drop a comment below, let me know your thoughts on Ling, and please consider sharing, subscribing, and checking the description below for more episodes and details about how you can support the channel.